This is Amoeba Doctor podcast number 10. I've done 10 of these now. I'm trying to shoot to have one per week. Just release them up on Saturdays. It's Thursday today. It's January 28th, 2021. This is my last unobstructed day before I go live back on campus. Um, I am going to be heading back. So I, I work Friday and Saturday, but I'll, I'll be at mom and pop's place until then. And then Sunday afternoon, I'm heading to church, coming back here to grab my stuff, and then I'm going back. Campus is only like 35 minutes from mom and dad's place, so it, it's not that big of a deal for me. I'll still see them. Um, but uh, it's a bigger deal for them, you know. I moved out out of necessity, not because I want to spend an extra $10,000 a year. I was actually debt-free before I moved out. Debt-free for three years of college. It's a damn hard thing to do. I worked, um, I worked at least one job for most of that time. Actually, I, I worked a job the entire time. I, I have not been unemployed in... What am I, 22? I haven't been unemployed since I was 14. Um, either officially or unofficially. Because, you know, I make my own job as well, right? So, but no, that'll be that'll be fun. Um, now that we've got the, uh, the computer situation figured out, where my computer can make more efficient use of bandwidth, campus internet should be good for streaming now, thanks to using Streamlabs instead of OBS Studio. So that will be really, really fun. Um, we'll be able to do that a bit more. So, And if I'm lucky, I won't have a roommate. One of the things that always kept me from streaming was because I had a roommate, and he was always in our shared room. Always. And uh, he said that he's not going to come back this next semester because he's tired of getting locked down for literally no reason twice i got quarantined twice because uh somebody who so i i there were five roommates myself included in our dorm right three rooms two people each except for one room with one person right two of those five never actually are at the dorm they usually crash at their girlfriend's place Okay, and then there's myself and my roommate, my actual roommate roommate, and then there's the other dorm mate down the hall, right? And so what happened was that one of the dorm mates tested positive for COVID. I hadn't seen him in a month. The university still required me to quarantine. That's like saying, uh, you know that guy down the street that you, you said hi to last August? Yeah, he tested positive. You got to go quarantine. Like, but it's January, so, but the incubation period, so, I mean, so that's, it's bureaucracy, right? Better safe than sorry. No, that's not even safe. That's just sorry. You know, it's, it's a different form of sorry. It's, it's not like quarantines are a universal good, you know what I mean? You, you gotta not be dumb about how you do them, so. Anyway, so we're going back after this one so that'll be nice uh, i still have a cache of videos that um are going to be filmed at this place um so that's not going to be immediately reflected in the footage but that's okay oh man two months wow i've been here two months I was not thrilled about going back to mom and dad's place because i was worried that the reasons that i left would still be present and a couple of them are um, but many of them have changed thank god for that so anyway amiibo so you guys know about this already probably um but the first chic tournament win has happened the first chic tournament win like oh my god the first Sheik tournament. Uh, it was Mide both times, actually. So two. The first two Sheik tournament wins happened one after the other. Um, Mide's Sheik. That's M-I-D-E. It is pronounced Mide. M-I-D. 
right mind not midi not me day not something else it's mind um like the word bromide right the chemical bromide bro my that one um the first tournament was a B and below legal tournament. That that happens a lot with tournament formats. Um, they will restrict the tier placements of the allowed characters. So like, you know, every amiibo tournament is not the same, right? Like if I host an amiibo tournament, um, it's it's you know all legal characters, which is A plus and below because S tier is banned, right? Um, but some people they they don't like the top tiers. Some people don't like the bottom tiers, you know. Um, in this case, B and below, you know, if, if it was like B plus or A and below, Sheik wouldn't have won. But like, in this case, B and below, like that's, Sheik has been considered to be the worst in Ultimate for a long time. Um, I I was saying Sheik was the worst in Ultimate even before Bayonetta got buffed. And I stand by that. Um, this is just proof. Like, I don't know about anybody else's Sheik, but my Sheik is definitely viable. So that's that's actually really nuts. That's actually really nuts. That's that's proof that um, I I need to do an actual video on this. But that's proof that you can win with low tiers. That's the beautiful thing about amiibo. You can win. You know, it's like I I like to think of it in terms of melee. So. The common complaint about Melee is that, oh, only a third of the cast is tournament viable. And if you're not playing Fox, you're going to lose. Because people are idiots and they just read Reddit comments and don't actually play Melee and understand that that's not true in the slightest. However, that's not, that's not the case, right? About half the cast is viable, which is, you know, for 26 characters, having an extra four viable characters is a big deal. Well, so that actually got expanded. There was a Japanese player named Amsa. Amsa shows up with Yoshi, with strategies nobody has ever seen before with Yoshi. With double jump canceling and stuff. Very hard reads. He makes Yoshi into a poor man Spacey, as he calls it. That's, you know, Spacey is a fox or falco, right? Space animal. He makes Yoshi into a poor man Spacey and starts, like, doing ridiculously well considering the very low tier placement of Yoshi. Amiibo is the same way. You know? It's... You're significantly more likely to win with an A-plus tier Amiibo than you are with, like, a C. Right? And you're a lot more likely to win with a C than you are with an F. But you know what? The tier placement isn't everything. Okay? Remember... There's 40 trainers in competitive Amiibo. There's 80 characters in Smash Ultimate. Okay. Sometimes, lower tiers take three to 400 trains to get figured out. Just ask Fammy to Mammy. Fammy knows! I did a mini documentary on it. Granted, it was a really bad one. I, I regret that it was so crappy, but I was very short on time. Um, but Fammy knows. Sometimes it takes three to 400 bins. That happens, you know? The, the biggest reason that Amiibo end up in low tiers is not because they're crap, unless it's like Ken. It's because... Oh, excuse me. It's because nobody's figured them out. You know? There's some exceptions. If you go to AmiiboDoctor.com right now, add a slash tier list to the end of that. Go, go check out the Amiibo tier list with me. And we will talk about this. There we go. Yeah, so, like, looking at Sheik, Sheik is at the absolute bottom of D tier right now, right? There's been a lot of people who've trained Sheiks in the past. But it took three to four hundred bins, three to four hundred differently trained Sheik amiibo to figure out Sheik. My just figured out Sheik. You know? Who's to say that the same thing can't happen with Jigglypuff or Peach or Inkling? Or Bowser Jr.? Why is Bowser Jr. so low? D plus tier, really? Didn't he used to be, like, C plus? I'd put him in C plus still, but Reparo hasn't been around lately. Reparo, where are you at? Um, that's gonna get someone in trouble, and I'm gonna love it. But no, like it, it takes things like that. But Amiibo is possible if you have a favorite character. Okay, like if you have a favorite character, train the shit out of that character. You know, figure them out. Get dedicated. It may take you six months to a year. To figure out this character. Okay? 
you may have to to know the absolute ins and outs of this amiibo ai top to bottom but you can do it that's the thing about amiibo training that's why in the principles of amiibo doctor video i said every trainer is important that's well that's one of the reasons why there are many reasons the reason that every trainer is important is because you never know one of the reasons you never know who's going to make a breakthrough you never know like there's there's not much of a breakthrough that you can make with link you know there there could be a new form of optimal link amiibo that could happen especially after the patches right because it used to be boomerang forward air up smash well now boomerang to bow is something that he'll do whether you get him to or not right so now maybe there's a new option that doesn't include boomerang spam i don't know but there is plenty of room for the low tiers plenty of room you know what i mean so don't ever give up on your amiibo don't ever give up so like i, I did an amiibo hospital arena last night that's the donor only discord server and Oh, I did. I just I ran the arena while I was writing up some posts. Which, by the way, if you're watching AmoebaDoctor.com, um, I apologize for all of the where to buy posts. I'm I'm switching the content over more more to answering the questions that people ask, as opposed to just what I feel about like writing about in that moment. I will still do some of those. Like I'll do meta commentaries periodically and stuff. Um, but like. I did post last night on where to buy Banjo, where to buy Byleth, where to buy Terry. Because people keep asking me those, and rather than write out, well, it's pre-order right now, and these are some of the places, I'd rather just be able to throw them the link, you know? So I apologize for that. We're going to have a little bit of that in the short, in the near future. Um, anyway, so, no, so I threw in a Palutena, and, and Palutena's placement in the tier list never really made sense to me. I was like, this is a crap amiibo. Like, how is Palutena... Uh, C plus tier, bottom is C plus. And then I saw how my Palutena played. I wanna say it beat a Terry amiibo. I, I'm pretty sure it beat LML's Terry amiibo. And uh I was like, oh, damn, I see that, you know. And uh you know, I, I didn't do a particularly good job training this Palutena. I don't even remember training it all that much. But like you know, it just happened, right? It beat a Terry. Was it a Terry? Was it... I'm pretty sure it was a Terry. Might have been a Banjo, but I think it was a Terry. It was LML's Terry. I think. I don't know. He's probably going to show up in the comments and tell me. So, like, don't ever give up on your Amiibo, man. We just won... We... Mine just won two tournaments with Sheik. The literal worst Amiibo in the game. You know what I mean? The worst amiibo in the game. That, on its own, should move Sheik up to top of D+. Now, I, I will say, you know, how replicable is it? Like, if Sheik has a 1% chance of winning, first of all, that's still, that's not nothing, right? Nothing has a 0% chance of winning. <sighs> but, um... What was I saying? Oh, right. No, like, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, okay. One of the things the tier list should take into account is the likelihood that if you train an amiibo of that character, the likelihood that it will win. Right? And that's a vague statement. You can argue, well, is it the best training or the worst training? Is it the, the optimal training? What if there's only one rep? What if... The, I know, there's a lot of ways to interpret that. But this just means that Sheik, for the first time, has now won an Amiibo tournament. Which means Sheik should automatically be over everything else that hasn't won an Amiibo tournament. I don't think there's that many things right now that haven't. You know, and I'm, I'm not counting, like, oh, D and D plus tier Amiibo tournaments. Because those are, like, restricted, right? And those are, those are far too restricted to be um, useful. You know what I mean? But still, like... 
There's something about sitting here in the sunlight, because there's like a skylight right in front of me. Something about sitting here in the sunlight, sunlight just makes, makes me tired. I don't know why. No, nah, man. Just don't give up on Amiibo. Ever. Just don't ever do it. Oh, I'm going to give up on Amiibo. Shut up. That's a bad idea. You should feel bad for thinking that. You know? And it's okay to reset your Amiibo. This is why I tell people, like, get a power saves. Get Tagmo. So you can save... If you only have one Amiibo, and you want to train, retrain, retrain, right? Get it so that you can save backups of your Amiibo. So that if you screw it up, you can rewrite it. You know, you still have the, the old good one. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of a big deal to be able to do that, right? Why did I, I, don't, I just don't understand. Why did I wait so long to get a power saves? You know what I mean? Because I, I waited until like 2018 to get a power saves. For some reason. I'm glad I didn't wait until Ultimate. But dude, getting a, getting Tagmo, getting a power saves, just changes everything. It actually does. It's just that, that little next step that's like, oh... I actually am in charge of the amiibo now. Because I can make copies and save things. <laughs> We're going to yawn. Okay, good. Why am I so tired? I don't understand. Only when I'm recording. Like, I don't yawn randomly. Um, well, sometimes when I'm on video. So if, if nobody's listening to me or looking at me, I don't yawn. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Oh, what else? What else is going on Amiibo? Two months until uh, Banjo Terry Byleth. That's going to be difficult. Um, trying to get to the top of search results for that. So that more people discover the YouTube channel. Probably starting in uh, towards the beginning of March. Um, we're going to go... It's going to be like a month, but we're going to do more of those videos. All right up. <sighs> oh, you know what? I'm gonna stand up. Fuck it. I don't yawn when I stand up. I only yawn when I sit down. Um, it's gonna be a little bit louder, isn't it? Uh, can I sit this down on this thing? There. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm gonna have to make sure to like have. So, so one of the major sources of growth for the channel. I'm screwing up the microphone. Good job, Doc. One of the major sources of growth for the channel last time was that we had the Joker Amiibo guide up early. Um, and it was an actual credible guide. That's, okay, that's the thing. So I get people asking me, can I write a guide? Can I write a guide? Can I please write a guide? And I'm like, you know, do you have tournament wins, right? We don't do training guides on AmiiboDoctor.com without results. You can't just train one or two bin files and get some info from people and train a bin and say, yeah, I'm a qualified trainer. You don't get to do that, okay? I am an expert on Amiibo. I know, he's claiming to be an expert. I Well, if you didn't see the name Amiibo Doctor and, and realize I was claiming expertise, then you might not be an expert. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, you know, I, I think the, the breadth and understanding of content on this channel and on the website demonstrates I am an expert on Amiibo. Um, I've put in the time and research to make that happen. Um, as an expert on Amiibo, I can tell you, unless you have tournament results with a character, you're not qualified for a guide. Now, sometimes there's exceptions, like Amiibots, for example. I just put up a Jigglypuff guide, and I think, uh, it has this, there's, there, the guy who wrote the Jigglypuff guide, Craig, I think is his name, um, has like a 65% win rate. On a me bots with his Jigglypuff over a hundred matches, that's an exception that I would make because it's Jigglypuff with a sixty-five percent win rate. You know who else has a sixty-five percent win rate on a me bots? Proto Man. You know what the tier difference is between Mega Man and Jigglypuff? Let me look again. AmiiboDoctor.com/slash tier list. Proto Man is B tier. Jigglypuff is D. 
There's a two-tier difference, and he got the same win rate as one of the best. So, no, that I would count as qualifying. But otherwise, no, dude. That's that's part of the reason why we don't have all the training guides up. It's not because, oh, there's no expertise at Amiibo Doctor. Nobody actually knows what they're doing, and they're just... They're not as good of a resource as the Reddit thread that I saw. No, dude, it's because every single training guide we have on AmiiboDoctor.com is the absolute best, tippity-top, pinnacle, most relevant training information for that Amiibo you possibly can find. Ever. It's the best. That's why I pay people for their info. They gave it to me for free, and then I was like, well, I'm making revenue from the website and YouTube channel. Let's cut people checks. I actually paid out the first check to some of the writers. Then, you know, I had to reimburse myself for some expenses, right? Because I had to pay the website and uh, tax purposes as well. But the rest of it went directly to people writing guides, you know? So, but we, we are going to have uh, a DLC Amiibo tournament here in a bit once I get moved in. <laughs> um, it does have uh, Banjo Terry Byleth Amiibo. Where I'm, I want to do at least two tournaments. Okay? And, the, and it'll be Amiibo Hospital exclusive because I don't... As much as I would love to do a public tournament like that, um, the reason I do Amiibo Hospital exclusive is A, providing incentive for people who donate. More specifically, B... I can trust those people more, you know? Um, I can trust them, like, not to get salty about a tournament, not to be like, hey, it's unfair. That's another thing. It's, it's, it is, I'll admit, it is unfair for, you know, certain people to have, like, a Terry bin and not everybody. But we're also trying to not leak bin files to the public because otherwise we'll get, like, Amiibo cards made of them before they actually release, and then shit's going to hit the fan. So, you know... See, I'm not yawning. I'm standing up and I'm not yawning. God. What is the deal here? <laughs> um, but no, so we're going to do at least two tournaments. The best ones of those amiibo, or of those tournaments, um, will uh, we'll advise the guide. I'll film the guide, right? I'll have them write up a preliminary version the the intention behind training guides is that it's a one and done thing this is the best amiibo for the good long while right that's why we look for exceptional stuff you know i've never ever believed that training guides should be updated if a training guide has to be updated i i don't mind if the original writer has to be has to update it right oh i found something new okay good right but if it's like, oh, well, person X told me a year and a half ago that this is the best way to train that amiibo, so we'll write the guide based on that information. No! The amiibo meta a year and a half ago had Isabel in A-plus tier. Wasn't an official tier list back then, but she was winning tournaments. Like, the amiibo meta a year ago thought Yoshi was top tier. No! That's wrong. No, uh-uh. You know what I mean? So, like, they will get updated periodically, but the, the reason that I try to get as concrete and solid of information as possible is because the, the way the meta is changing is slowing down. It's not changing as much, okay? Low tiers are going up, but mid tiers, not going up that much. High tiers aren't moving anymore, right? There's maybe one or two that are moving, otherwise that's it, right? So now we can start saying, set in stone, this is the best way, right? So like with Link, for example, short of AI patches, the optimal Link has not changed in at least a year. You know? Um, there was a trainer who's no longer in the scene that, that basically figured out the optimal Link, and that hasn't changed. You know? Whereas with Sheik, like I said earlier, because Sheik needs those 400 bins to figure out, Optimal Sheik is still up for debate, right? So training guides are mostly set in stone. Um, obviously, with I, I do make a small exception with the DLC Amiibo, though, because patches happen. Um, they're going to get labbed a lot. They're going to get figured out a lot. So that is going to happen. But for the most part, I do want tournament results to start off with so that even if people come back in a year, it's not going to be too far off from where the meta is at that point. That's the I know the meta is going to change, right? 
I've already been looking at updating some of our oldest guides or just scrapping them and getting new riders for them completely for like people who aren't in the scene anymore. Um, but the, the ultimate goal is that the guides are good now and forever and that they're not too far off from where the meta will end up. Because there is a 20XX to Amiibo. There actually is. That's a thing. Not here yet. It's never actually going to be here necessarily unless editing becomes legal. Behavior editing, yeah, that's a thing. Haven't talked about it much, but people have figured out behavior editing with Amiibo. But, uh, no. So, but that is going to happen. We're going to have Banjo Terry Byleth training guides. Um, expect that tournament to happen soon. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be really fun. You'll enjoy it. If you don't, I'll kick you in the head. You know what I mean? Let me grab... I'm going to be right back. Give me like 45 seconds. I know, if you're watching this on the premiere, don't go away. Don't. No. Stop. Stick around. Give me like 45 seconds. fast was that whoo 36 i think oh good job doc you stud oh i might need to sit down after that wait no i don't anyway yeah man that's what we do here you know if your information is that good isn't it worth paying for? Mine is. I don't know if anyone else is who is. I've, I've looked, too, and there's really not. But that's also kind of the point, is like... You know... Gathering the experts, right? For the Amiibo Avengers. <laughs> the best of the best. So... Oh, man. What else? What else is going on with Amiibo? I feel like I talk about this every podcast, but the website's doing really well. It has, it has just blown my f***ing mind. I tried not to swear so it didn't get demonetized, but it still will anyway, probably. Um, no, it's just been blowing my mind. Like, just the, the ridiculous levels. Okay, so like, what? Two, almost three weeks ago, I did a live stream after work. It was on a Saturday night, maybe. Excuse me, I probably shouldn't belch into the microphone. And <clears throat> basically it was announcing Operation Bring Down the House. And Operation Bring Down the House is, we're going to hit a million hits this year. Come hell or high water, we're getting a million. And the reason that we're hitting a million, and that I'm shooting for that, is to prove there is Amiibo content out there that is just as fun and entertaining and thoroughly informative. That's the big one, is informing people. Especially informative. As anything that other YouTubers, other websites have put out. Anything. In fact, more informative. Because, like, you look at websites, and for them it's all about collecting amiibo and and amiibo functionality they don't care about training amiibo right for youtubers it's all about wow look at the big strong amiibo he's the best amiibo in the world ever no he won't fight any of your amiibo he's too good haha <laughs> wink nudge right and like operation bring down the house starting with the website because the youtube channel is kind of hard to it's, it's a lot harder to grow a YouTube channel, actually. YouTube SEO is a lot simpler, um, but it's much, much harder to grow a YouTube channel, I think. Um, at least it is for me. Uh, but no, like, 
this this proves that amiibo is more than just collecting right a million hits a year on amiibodoctor.com well the thing is let me get to my point here the thing is we need 2740 hits a day to average a million across a whole year two days ago we got 2854 yesterday we got 2562 a week ago, we were averaging like 2,200 a day, 2,300, and now we're going up another 200 every day. Like, what the hell? <laughs> this is crazy. This is growing significantly. You know, somebody uh, asked me, they were joking, they weren't being serious, I don't think, but they were like, well, yeah, if you get a million hits a year, then... Um, that's a big money for you. I'm like, no, I get like two bucks a day from this on a good day. <laughs> it's not about the money for me because like the the money on this website is almost nothing. Right? Like, you know, two bucks a day is $730 a year. Okay, first hundred pays for the website. That's done. The rest of the money pays for training guides. That's done. Well, I've also got regular contributors that I'm going to occasionally give nice things to. Well, that's done. And then what about other assets? There, there might be 100 or 200 left over for me. And why shouldn't I have it? <laughs> why shouldn't I take some money? 95% of the content on the website is mine. So, you know. But no, I'm still thinking about that Redbubble shop. Looking for people whose designs I can buy. Even if it's just like two, three dollars a piece. Like if you have a backlog, if you have a portfolio of designs that is, you know, simple Nintendo designs that I can put on uh on uh T shirts and stuff, dude, show me. Seriously. two three dollars a piece like for the for the rights to your design you know if you if you've done like if you've drawn like 40 things and you have like you know transparent canvas pngs of them that i can put down hell yeah i'll pay you 80 bucks for your portfolio for the rights specifically the rights for your portfolio doesn't bother me. Put them all because the the likelihood that I'm gonna make any money off of it is actually pretty slim. But I also have a gambling addiction. That or well, that's not true. I have the potential to very very quickly develop a gambling addiction. That's the way to put it. I bought a lottery ticket once three years ago. I think about it every day. I was like, I should go buy another one. No. It's only $5. No. $5 can also buy you a pizza. Am I planning on buying a pizza? No. Then I won't need those $5. Don't waste $5. What if I'm buying a pizza? Then, you know, just back and forth, right? <laughs> it's important to be self-aware. Otherwise, I would have bought a lot of lottery tickets by now. It's true. It's true. But I figure, you know, this is a lottery that I may actually win. These red bubble shirts. So, but yeah, dude, if you have like a portfolio, hell yeah, man. I don't mind. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know how I got on that topic. Um, been working out. That's been fun. I think I hurt my shoulder yesterday. Not sure. It doesn't like feel weird, but I, I also put a lot more weight on it in in bad form. So I may have to get that checked out. Maybe. I don't have regular health insurance, but I'm also young, so it's not a problem. <sighs> what else? I don't know, dude. I just, I'm feeling like I could run through a fucking wall right now. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, just, just run. Just charge through. Like, so I did this community post. Let me read this to you, this community post. You probably saw it. Uh, 
Okay, so it's it's got a picture of that day um, where we got 2,854 views, right? This is what it says. Yesterday's AmoebaDoctor.com viewership. 2,740 is needed every day to average a million views a year. This is a big fucking deal. I was watching Moneyball, the baseball movie, and I saw the scene where Brad Pitt's character, the baseball manager with a brand new enormously successful strategy, is getting offers from major teams to bring his strategy to them. The team representative tells him, The first guy through the wall always gets bloody. Always. They didn't know how to handle you, so they ignored you, tried to stop you, and then tried to end you. But it didn't work. These other guys, these big Amiibo YouTube channels and creators, don't care about Amiibo. It's a 15 minute and 30 second video of heavily edited, mass produced hype, in air quotes. It's all, this Amiibo is good because he hits hard. There's no strategy, there's no research, there's no fun. There's no fun. It's not your Amiibo on the screen. It's theirs. But in competitive Amiibo, it is yours on the screen. Win or lose, competitive Amiibo puts you on an even level as all the others. You think Hard DK, Pumpkin, Big Z, etc. would do well in competitive Amiibo? We'll never know, because that would require someone else's Amiibo to be on the screen, and that means losing control of the mass-produced hype. If Hard DK goes 0-2 in bracket like he did in Raid Boss Open, that breaks the narrative of being the strongest Amiibo. Let's break through that wall. It won't start with YouTube, we're not big enough to break that wall yet. We'll, take, we'll start with the Google search results. It's time to take back Amiibo from places like Metabomb and Kotaku and Polygon that just see it as clicks. We'll break them first. And then? You'd better watch out, Amiibo YouTube. Amiibo Doctor is coming, and he's bringing a lot of patience with him. Right? I feel like I could run through a fucking wall. Like, that's why I used the metaphor from Moneyball. Was because I feel like I could run through a fucking wall right now. Seriously. You know why? Do you know why? It is very common for people in uh, children. You're, you're going to want to end this podcast right now. You're not going to want to continue watching this, okay? If you're below the age of like 15 to 16, turn this off. It is very common for people with internet access and nobody to really answer to when they're alone in lockdown to look up, you know, images of uh, rather scantily clad women. And do various things to themselves because of those images, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? I knocked it off. I stopped doing that. I know. I, you sound like a no-fap. Yeah, okay, I know. I hate that label, too. I think it's the, the culture is a little weird. But, like, I stopped doing it for two weeks, started working out, right? I feel like I could run through a fucking wall. <laughs> do you realize that? Seriously! Like, God! I was depressed for most of my life, and I always wondered why, and I think that was it. I'm serious! Oh, but it makes me happy. No, it makes you happy for 15 seconds. Then you go back to being depressed, and you're just a little bit lower than where you were. You know? You just sink a little bit. It's not like you're proud of yourself. Hey, hey, look what I just saw. Would you, like, show your mom? Hey, mom, this one dwarf is taking a dump on the dude dressed up like Princess Elsa. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I actually, there's really just rule 34. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously. God, don't do that anymore. You will feel ten times better. Seriously. There's this myth that not doing that periodically is, like, bad for your health. And I did the research on this. That's a myth. That is not true. It's actually it's actually good for your health to not do that. There's more health benefits associated with not doing it than with doing it. So that's why I feel like I could run through a fucking wall right now. You know? Like, seriously. Because, like, you know, for whatever reason, double majoring... Getting two valuable degrees from a high-level state university, right? Eh, that, that never really got me excited. Law schools sending me letters saying, hey, would you please come apply? Eh, it never really got me excited. AmiiboDoctor.com, going up to 400 views a day like it did around this time last year. I think it was in March, April. It was in April. April of last year. It was nine months ago. 
that we went from 100 hits a day to 400, right? That never really got me excited. And you know why? Because all of my endorphins were being just wasted in 15 seconds. Seriously, when was the last time without chemical substance additions... We're not talking about like antidepressants here, right? When was the last time you felt like you could run through a fucking wall and just kill anything in your way? Just destroy it. Just... Ah! Right? Just barbarian on them. When was the last time you felt like that? Probably never. Probably never. You know? Serious, like... God, I just... I don't know, man. You know? Like, I, I really started... I, I started to enjoy life once I moved out. That had a big, big impact, right? I had a couple weeks of depression, um, and then I, I actually got, like, really on it, right? And then, like, you know, I moved back in. I was like, oh, whatever. But I, I did some, like, long-distance running here and there to at least sort of do something besides just hang out at home all day because hanging out at home all day is horrible for your health it's bad for your mental health it's horrible for your physical health you know and then like i started working out because my kid brother saw that i was depressed and he was like hey man you need to like because there was a there was about a two-week period where i was depressed again after coming back home for winter break right he was like dude i gotta take you to the gym we got to get this taken care of. And I was like, okay. So I did, right? And now I'm still doing it even though he's back on campus, on his university's campus because he's at a different university, right? And now, like, dude, I'm just, I feel pure. Do you, like, have you ever felt like your entire body was made of pure cocaine? That's what I feel like, okay? I'm 40 pounds overweight. I don't have definable muscles yet except for my pectorals, Okay. But I feel like the sexiest hunk you have ever seen. I've never felt like this before. I'm serious, okay? I know on the camera, I'm some loser who doesn't even have like 1,500 subs yet. Who is this guy? He's just a loser. I don't give a shit. I'm a hunk. Sorry, the echo keeps, you know, doing that. I'm just fucking on it. Yeah! Like, that's how I feel inside. <laughs> Quit rubbing them out. Stop. <laughs> it's terrible for you. It's a lie. Oh, it's good for you. It's good for your mental health and sexual development. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. Do the research on this. Seriously, it's perfectly normal. Doesn't mean it's good. You know what's normal? The average weight of the adult male age 20 and up is 200 pounds and that's skewed downwards by the 20 year olds the average weight of adult let me look this up what's the average weight of adult males 40 and over we'll go american males god bless america fucking commies average weight for men for american men We'll say over 40, because there's nobody over 40 really in my audience yet. Um, but like, we're all, oh, whoops, we're all going to get old one day. Yeah, so the, the average weight from 40 to 59 is 200 pounds. And I guarantee you most of that's not muscle. Go to Walmart. I work at Walmart, right? Go to Walmart. You see the people around Walmart? How much of that is muscle, do you think? Yeah, exactly. Dude, it's a lie. Just because something is normal doesn't make it okay. You know that? You know what's normal? Depression. You know what's normal? No money. <laughs> you know what's normal? Bad relationships. Don't be fucking normal. Screw monetization. Don't be fucking normal. Normal is stupid as shit. If everyone else is doing something and they're all complaining about I'm unsuccessful and depressed, why would you do it? Why would you do it? 
It's like, hey, I left my hand on this very hot stove and I didn't take it off for 35 years and I can't feel anything in my hand. Are you going to do that too? Won't you join me? Like, no. You know? You know what's not normal these days? Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? Well, how did my fly come down? That's weird. Oh, no. Oh, these are the jeans the fly comes down on their own. Oh, I wore these to work the other day and didn't know. Oh, God, that was bad. Um, sometimes jeans are like that, man. I hate them. Is there, like, a way I can tape it off? I don't know. Um, but no, like... I would just look down and my flies down like what? Like oh. No. Um. What was I saying? No. There. There are things that are normal and that are good. Okay. You look at every human society across the face of the earth, and do you know what you see? Men and women getting hitched, having kids. Having kids is the most important part, right? People who have kids, on average, report themselves to be happier in the long run. Same thing with marriage. People who say that they're married married report themselves to be happier in the long run. By the way, that whole uh, 50% of marriages end in divorce, that's true, but that's very weighed. That's very weighted. Actually, like, I want to say it's like 70% of people who get married stay married for the rest of their life. But then you've got, like, the small number of people who end up with, like, four and five marriages that outweigh the rest. You know? Like, my grandparents are both on their fourth spouse. You know? Grandma, my, I'm not gonna say their name. I'm not gonna say their names. My mom's mom is on her fourth husband, and her husband is on his fourth wife. You know, so no, no, dude. Marriage has a much better shot at lasting. Oh, it's a coin flip. No, it's not. And even if it is a coin flip, that means you've got a you've got a better than average shot of getting it right at least the first time, if not the second. I don't know if it's better than average. I don't know what the average is. So even if you do believe that, okay, get married, try it again. You know? I don't know, man. I I could just be totally wrong. The statistics could be totally off. The research could be totally outrageous. All I know is that I feel like I can run through a fucking wall. I feel like right now I can run rings about around my enemies. I feel like I can destroy, just fucking crush Amiibo YouTube. I know, they may have 30 times, 40 times, 300 times the subscribers that I have. I don't give a fuck! I do not give a fuck. Let's fucking get them. They're in front of me. <laughs> you're an obstacle you're not even an enemy enemies are worth your spite right they're not even enemies they're just obstacles i've started to really figure out google search engine optimization next i need to figure out youtube search engine optimization i need to get creative and tricky one of the themes one of the themes of moneyball to go back to that community post i read earlier is that the way baseball fought was medieval okay they thought we're gonna buy players that make our team better because they're great players as opposed to looking to how many runs how much scoring can that player do right the way that i've been thinking as an amiibo youtuber the way that amiibo youtube has been thinking is medieval it's medieval i've been thinking as an amiibo youtuber how can i inform the people who watch my videos Okay, they've been thinking, how can I make videos that entice you to click on them and then be entertained? We're both wrong. We're both wrong. What we should be thinking is, how do I create a culture of people who love Amiibo, who enjoy Amiibo, who are curious and interested about the research and about the process and about the tournaments? How do I make those people? That's the problem. So you go, we'll go, we'll pick on, uh, who are we going to pick on? Let's pick on Captain Kid. 
So Captain Kidd, his his story as a, that's not right, Captain Sauce, nope. His story um, as a YouTuber is very interesting to me. He basically stopped growing completely. Like, so he's Alpharad's IRL friend, okay? And Alpharad pushed him as a YouTuber, and he got to 50,000 subscribers pretty quickly. He's had almost no subscriber growth over the last few weeks. Like, almost nothing. I think I checked three weeks ago, he was at 77,000 subs, now he's at 79,500. For somebody who regularly collaborates with Alpharad, that's nothing. Okay? And again, we're just picking on him because this is a, this is a useful, um, useful example. So you look, you look at, <clears throat> um, at his Amiibo videos, right? And his Amiibo videos tend to outperform his other videos. Okay, I'd, I'd have to pull up the stats, but I'm seeing about 20 to 30, 000, going back like six and seven months, I'm seeing 20 to 30,000 views on each of his videos. And then Amiibo videos always do better than that. Right? And then, you know, you've got Alpha Rad collaborations and that's its own thing. But Captain Kidd is dead. As a YouTuber, he's dead. He has nothing left in the tank. I don't know if he knows that or not. I think it's pretty clear to most people there's nothing left in the tank. Okay? His most recent videos... A Merry Massacre Level 9 CPU Tournament. One month ago, 16,000 views. 80,000 subscribers. Almost. 16,000 views after a month. Pretty good thumbnail. Popular topic. Level 9 CPUs. Right? Do you know what he didn't do? And this is this is why other Amiibo YouTubers get diminishing returns on their Amiibo videos. Do you know what he didn't do? He didn't get people interested in their Amiibo. Everyone who watches his, his videos, almost everyone, is going to have an Amiibo. And they're going to say, Hey! I have an Amiibo too! I'm curious! And you know this, because they get like 100 messages a day from people saying, Hey, I want to fight your Amiibo. I get like 30 a day! I really, prob if I did not answer my Discord DMs, like, I would probably have at least 200 in a day. Seriously. Um, I get a lot of Discord messages. And so you know what people realized? What people have gradually realized over 2020, and as 2021 continues? All Amiibo content is the same. They're all copying each other, Right? There's nothing, so there's, there's, and if you go to AmiiboDoctor.com, you know this, you can tell this, right? There's piles and piles and piles of information on Amiibo. It's literally enough that I have been doing this, what is it, 2021? For six years now, okay? And I still don't know half as much as some of the people in USAC. Okay? Okay? If they had gotten people interested in their own amiibo, and they had said, hey, this is what your amiibo can do, and this is how you do it, they would never be having this problem. Kid would probably be at 100,000, 120,000 by now. But then, but then you look, the one time, the one time, the one time, look at this. So Choctopus did a video, this is the video why people think Choctopus is the best amiibo trainer. The one time I have ever seen didn't, wasn't Choctopus at like 300,000, 360,000 subs? Why is he at 280? I thought he was at a lot more. Um, the one time a large Amiibo YouTuber that I know of has ever done a video where he where they teach you about your Amiibo is Choctopus's How to Train a Raid Boss Amiibo video. 381,000 views. Every time you search Amiibo training, that video comes up. Which I'm thoroughly jealous of. Probably the one the one thing on YouTube that I'm actually jealous of is that video. <laughs> the, the, the one thing. Literally the one thing. Because, like, I don't need Amiibo Doctor. I'm going to be successful in real life regardless. Law school, people. Law school, right? It's not, you know, my success is not hingent on Amiibo Doctor. But that one damn thing, right? And it built... It's one of his, like... It's a gate... I've seen the stats on this, Okay. 
he gets so many subscribers from that video even now it's been over a year he gets so many subs from that because he taught people about their amiibo the way that we have been thinking about amiibo is medieval it's backwards they've been trying to entertain i've been trying to inform about amiibo in general right we need to teach you about your amiibo and i've been trying to adopt to this right whatever and i, I and, and the really where i've been going wrong is updating on competitive amiibo and that is still valuable and vital information okay but really we're all wrong i need to teach you about your amiibo because it's not about me it's not about Proto Man. It's not about the guy you see on the screen. Okay? Amiibo is not... It's a highly personalized thing because every Amiibo is completely unique. So how can it be about one Amiibo? If every Amiibo is unique and every person training them is unique, even if they're twins, they're still different. Twins are going to train Amiibo differently. If it's all unique, why are we making it about one Amiibo or two Amiibo? You know, it's awesome that Mide's Sheik won that tournament. It's damned incredible that it won that tournament. It actually is. I truly 100% mean that from the bottom of my heart. How can your Sheik win a tournament? How do we make that happen? Right? We've been behind. 2021. Okay, I said 2020 is the year of Amiibo. I said that. Okay. And it ended up being true. The YouTube channel grew a lot. The website grew even more. It is the year of Amiibo. 2021 is the year of your Amiibo. It's the year of your Amiibo. It's not my Amiibo. It's your Amiibo. So I'm going to be stewing on what can we do so that your Amiibo are in the spotlight. I know we do Amiibo arenas, right? Get you on stream, get you some screen time. And I, I love doing that, man. I love it when people want to show off their Amiibo. How can we do more of this? How can I teach you about your Amiibo? You know what I mean? That's the whole point. Let me get some water again. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Okay. We're all backwards about this. You know? Even, dude, even if we never break, like, the 2,000 sub mark or the 5,000 or the 10,000, I don't care. Like, part of me is like, dude, let's fucking destroy this wall, right? Let's break Amiibo YouTube. Break Amiibo YouTube. The other part of me is like, I'm doing it. Because I want to. I'm not reliant on this. This is not the source of my fulfillment. It's not. It's not the source of my fulfillment. This isn't my career. Excuse me. This isn't my career. You know? Could be. That would be fun. I'd really get a kick out of that. Doing competitive amiibo. But like... This isn't the case. You know? I'm doing this because I want to and because I believe in it. That's the point. I believe in it. I'm not doing this out of anything else. You know? This is why, and I know I say this all the time, but this is why anytime somebody subscribes or watches a, a video or whatever, why I'm very grateful for it. Because it means that they're seeing what I'm doing and they're like, hell yeah, buddy. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? That's what they're doing. <sighs> wow. I've been talking for almost an hour. 
and we'll let it get to the hour mark and then we'll we'll call it good dude I'm telling you man we're gonna fucking do this we're gonna have to reorganize we're gonna have to make it about your amiibo but we can do this this is the thing that we can do I'm very careful to use the words we. I think I, I did a couple of times in this podcast, but I'm very careful to use the words we because I believe it's we. I don't believe it's me. I believe it's we. You know that? After all, I, I can't make... How many views are we at today on the website? What are we looking at right now? I can't make 2,194 views show up out of nowhere. That doesn't happen. Definitely not with me. <laughs> this is a wee thing. So, alright, I've said my piece. Thank you for listening. <laughs>